Hello, I'm Philip Cameron, and I'm very excited to have you join us today. I believe this appointment is a God appointment. If you're an unsaved loved one, I want to see your family saved. Nobody in your family is outside of God's grasp. And I'm going to be sharing something that I believe will bless your heart. And also, you are going to see a miracle makeover. And this is mission work at the very cutting edge when our kids go into a home that was devastated by poverty. And our, the whole thing was transformed by the love of God and folks just like you. So welcome today. This is Daily Faith. Do you know that the point of giving up and breaking, just, just failing, is the very point of a miracle? God's permanent address is wit's end corner. When you have exhausted, the old hymn says, when I've exhausted my hoard of resources, God's bountiful giving has only just begun. And I want to encourage you today. I don't know why this just came in my spirit, literally, as I was pointed to to speak today. I, I just know that someone is watching this program and you are struggling with an issue that's bigger than you are, a problem that's so big that you can't see the end from the beginning and you are in a panic and you've been losing sleep over it. Well, I want to tell you something. God wants you to know that He has the answer already in place and that He is going to work things out. All things, the Bible says, work together for good to them that love the Lord. So do you love the Lord today? If you love the Lord, you're halfway to this miracle. And I want to believe God with you. One of the things that God's put in my heart for many years, oh, about 35 years ago, I was in my office in Montgomery, and God gave me a vision of hell. I, I saw in this vision people falling off the edge of time into eternity. I heard damned people speak, scream. Most unbelievable thing I've ever... And, and if you know me, I'm a very down-to-earth guy. And this vision sh shattered and changed my life. I saw people falling into a, a crisis eternity, into hell. And I, I began to scream in this dream, in this vision. And I kept saying, God, stop this. Stop this. And, and he began, God began to speak to me. And he said, they'll never laugh again. They'll never know peace again. They'll never be at rest again. There's no escape from where they are. And, and God birthed in me over that hour or so of a vision, a passion for your family. I am the first generation in two centuries to have lived without being an alcoholic. Every person, every man in our family, my dad, my grandfather, my uncles, everybody were totally enslaved by alcoholism. And God came into our family and broke 200 years of alcoholism. My dad was called up in the British Army. To, it was just after the Second World War. And the conscript or the draftee in front of him went to Korea. And the, and the one behind him went to Korea to fight. And my dad ended up being sent to Italy to join a police force to keep Italy from being taken over by the communists. And while there, he learned to drink like he'd seen his whole family do. But while he was in Italy, my mom found Jesus. Two young preachers came to our town and had a revival six weeks long. Ninety-seven converts got saved, and my mom was one of the ninety-seven. Sixty-seven Camerons got saved at the same time. So she wrote my dad, and she said, Simon, I've given my heart to Jesus. And my father thought that she'd fallen in love with a guy called Jesus. And he was not, he was not happy. And when he came back from the army. He stopped my mom going to church for seven years. He beat her every day trying to stop her loving Jesus. He would force her to go to the bar or the dance hall and if she wouldn't participate he would beat her up in front of his friends. Uh, and, and, and she lived in this hellacious no man's land for seven years. And she kept praying and kept believing God save Simon. 
save Simon, save Simon. In fact, that picture over my shoulder, that way, that's my mom and dad. And uh, after seven years of, of asking God to save my dad, one day he went to his work, and uh, he was working a 30-inch saw, and it was 2 o'clock in the afternoon, and my, my mom and he had had a great big fight at lunchtime, and she, he'd said to her, I'm never coming home. I hate this Jesus. I hate you. I hate everything. I was born at this time. And he was putting a piece of wood through this saw, and he looked up at the clock, and it was 2 o'clock. And as he put the piece of wood into the saw to be run through the saw, something happened to him. And he began to weep. And he was a tough soldier. And he, weeping was not, he just didn't do that. And then he began to shake. And his brother walked behind him. And my dad was standing with this piece of wood trying to, to find the end of it into the saw. And my, my uncle said to my dad, what are you doing, Simon? You're going to cut your hands off, man. And my dad said in Scottish, I done I can. What's wrong? I done I can. I don't know. I don't know. And they took him and they take him, took him up to the office and sat him down and gave him a cup of tea and tried to calm his nerves. They thought he was having a nervous breakdown. And they sent for my grandma, his mom, and she said, Simon, what's wrong with you? And he says, I done I can. I done I can. And they put him in the car and drove him back to the house what he'd just been with my mom, telling her he was never coming back. And they carried him in, and they lay him on the, on the little sofa. And, and my mom said, what's wrong? And he said, I, I, don't, I don't know, I don't, I can. And my mother, after seven years of abuse, looked at him and said, Simon, I think the Holy Ghost has got a hold of you, and you're convicted by the Holy Spirit. Now, that would have been a beating right away. And instead of beating her, he looked at her and said nothing. And she says, the Bible says if you call upon the name of the Lord, you will be saved. And my dad meant, thought she meant call, shout. So he was sitting on the sofa shouting, Jesus, tack me, tack me, Jesus, take me, Jesus. And you know what happened? In a little wee wooden hut in the north of Scotland, Jesus took him. He was born again instantly. Never drank again. Became a preacher literally overnight. He cried the whole weekend. And uh, he, he's often said this to me. He's in heaven now. But he used to say to me when what, I got off my knees, the blues were bluer and the greens were greener and the reds were redder. And I thought that someone had put the lights on double power. He went outside and he said that he thought the birds were singing. That Simon Cameron had been reconciled to God. The very first service he went to church, he says, Pastor, can I tell what Jesus has done? The next service, he says, Pastor, please let me tell what Jesus has done. And Sunday morning, G Pastor, please let me tell what Jesus... And he preached from that moment on. And the Lord wants you to know that there's no one in your family that's beyond God's reach. There's no circumstance that you're in today that be that's beyond God's ability to save. And if God can save us, a bunch of drunks in the north of Scotland, he can save you and your family. It can happen for you. And I pray for you in the name of Jesus that all the darkness and all the fears and all the doubts that's surrounding you right now, I come against it in the name of Jesus. And I claim a breakthrough in your home soon. And I just set myself on agreement with you for household salvation. Listen, I want to pray for you. We have an address, P.O. Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. Why don't you write me? I promise if you will send me the name of an unsaved loved one, I will hold that loved one in my hands and I will pray. You can go to philipdcameron.com as well, and you can send me a name, maybe your whole family. But I promise you, they will bring it to me, and I will lay hands on it, and I will believe God with you for a supernatural wave of salvation to come into your home. It can happen, if it can happen, to the Camerons in the northeast of Scotland with no contact with the gospel, no one to pray for us, we had no idea who Jesus was, but he knew who we were, 
and grace found us. And if grace can find us, he can find your family too. I want to help you see a miracle take place in your life. I wrote a book a wee while ago telling the story of our family. You will not believe what God did. That, that part I just told you, just, it's just a tiny wee bit. And also in the, in the back of this book is a teaching on how you can get your family saved. It is called Full House. And I urge you to order that book today. And let's start, you and I start, a journey, a breakthrough journey of total household salvation in the name of Jesus. It's time. Watch this. Full House. It's time for household salvation. We'll help you see your unsaved loved ones in a totally different light. God has given Philip insight into God's promise of household salvation. Do you know that you have a covenant throughout Scripture that promises that your family are part of your eternal inheritance? Philip's family was bound in alcoholism for over 200 years. And through the miraculous story as told in Full House, Jesus saved the Camerons. And in the span of six weeks, 67 of the Cameron family were saved. This book will change your life. Order Full House today and believe with Philip to see what God will do in your family. To order, please visit www.philipdcameron.com or call 1-833-DAILY-FAITH or contact us by mail. Post Office Box 242246, Montgomery, Alabama, 36124. This book will transform how you think about your family. Now listen to me. Your mind is the biggest obstacle to almost any part of your life, whether it's dieting or whether it's learning in school or your whatever it is, your mind is the biggest obstacle. This book, I promise you, will change your mind. It will help you see the possibility of your son getting saved and your daughter and your grandkids. And... Um, I poured my heart and soul into this thing. I laughed and cried as I told the story of the Camerons coming out of darkness, and you need to get this book. Write me today, and we will be in touch with you. Apart from your family salvation, God put in my heart years ago, over 30 years ago, my dad called me from Scotland and said, I want you to go to Romania. I said, where's Romania? He says, there are babies dying. And I says, that, I don't want to go to Romania. If that's what, no. And I put him off for a week. And he, he says, well, if you won't go. He was recovering from cancer surgery. And he said, well, if you won't go, I'll go by myself. And I said, oh, stop it. And I went. And that began a, an adventure that we are still living out today. And uh, we see young folk that are being put on the street from orphanages in Eastern Europe, in a country called Moldova, and also in the Ukraine. And these kids are just thrown out and they're used up to 30 times a day, 30 to 50 times a day actually. And, and then the last about three and a half years and then they're lost. And what we do in Moldova is we build homes for these kids and they, we take them from the orphanage and we put them back in school, share the gospel with them. And the craziest thing happens in their lives. They turn from orphans they find Jesus, and then they become like our sons and daughters. They call me dad and my wife Chrissy, mom, and, and Melody is sitting next to me, is, is, is sisters. I mean, we're all family. And once we get them to the point of being a family, then they become missionaries because the vision, they catch the vision. And uh, my daughter Melody is with us. You visited a house in Moldova, and tell us what you saw. We visited several houses in Moldova, and every single one of them that we went to um, is just heartbreaking, the things that we saw. Um, mothers who are barely, barely making ends meet. I wouldn't even say that they were making ends meet, um, but just such brokenness and the conditions they were living in were things that we would never even allow our pets to live in. But our kids, who are now no longer kids, they're adults now, and um, they are going into these villages to find these families that are, are, are on the brink of just 
complete destruction. And they're bringing help, um, whether that comes by food, wood to heat their homes in the winter, clothing. A lot of widows, yeah. Um, everything you can imagine. And the most exciting thing they do is extreme home makeovers. As we've all watched those shows over the years. Um, at some of these houses, the windows don't, there are no windows in some of them, doors, and um, they're living in how cold mud, mud flooring. How cold is it? Oh, cold like, uh, mm, too cold. I don't even want to think about it. Like Alaska cold. Yes. Um, and they completely turn these little homes around. And um, in a day, after we, after we visited this house, they said, we've got, we have to do something to help these families. The mother had already lost one of their children Child services had taken them away because their situation was so dire. So one of, one of our kids was in the orphanage already. Yes, and they said, we have to, these, our kids know what it's like to be without a mom or a dad. And they said, we cannot allow Pretty their kids. kids to be taken away. What, do, what can we do to make it, to make it better? So um, they came up with this plan to go back into this house within a day and turn the whole thing around. Um, so... It's pretty incredible. We've got video to show you so you guys can see exactly what they're doing um, and how they are changing lives, changing families on the other side of the world. Um, so it's pretty exciting. Um, if you guys want to um, take a look. and. Mulțumesc frumos pentru toate ce ați făcut, pentru toate curățenia care ați făcut-o. Vă mulțumesc frumos foarte mult. Uh, I just want to thank every one of you from the bottom of my heart and I really appreciate everything you did uh, for me and my kids. Nu mult pot să spun. Foarte mult. Vă mulțumesc din toată inima. I have no more words to, to say how thankful and grateful I am for everything you've done for me. Thank you. Da? Mama, I'm going to 
I didn't expect this at all, the, the change and everything from what it was and what it is now. So. Is that amazing? It's not just amazing. You're looking at a lady who has lost one of her kids to the orphanage and there's three more about to be taken away. And a bunch of kids that were once orphans showed up at her door. She didn't know. Measured the windows, measured all the doors. You saw the guy putting in the plaster to put the doors in place. And in a day, saved a family from being broken up and orphans being created. And that's what the orphans' hands do. We turn orphans into sons and daughters, and then sons and daughters into missionaries. And Mel was inside that house, and my wife Chrissy was there for Christmas time. And they, when my wife came back from, from Moldova, she couldn't even talk about all the fun stuff that happened. All she could say was, there's a family that's going to lose their kids if we don't do something. And uh, we were so grateful. Friends like you, this miracles take place when someone like you says, I'll be a part of this miracle. And how we do this and how this whole thing works is very simple. You can change your life for a dollar a day. Less than what you pay for a can of Coke, you can change a family like that. Our kids go to orphanages all the time and find girls and boys that are about to be put on the street when they're 16, lost forever. The trafficker comes up, offers them a fake job in Italy or wherever, and a wee girl gets in the back of her car and she's gone. And 30 to 50 times a day that girl is used. And they reckon that a lifespan is three and a half years is all they live in that kind of life. And our family, my, my wife Chrissy and Melody and my son Andrew and my son Phil, all of our family are completely committed to being God's hand extended in these people's lives, in these horrendous circumstances. And we need help. We can only reach as far as you allow us to and God speaks to folk to help us. And if you would like to be a part of this miracle, you can contact us at 833, not 88 or 800, 833, Daily Faith. If you just type out Daily Faith on your phone, there's a couple of extra letters, but that's fine. That helps you remember it easily. 1833 Daily Faith. And just say to the person that picks up the phone, I'm watching Phil the Melody, and I want to be a part of this miracle. And your dollar a day will allow us to change the lives of so many. The girl that you saw at the end of that program, her name is Nadia. We chose her one time. We put windows in the largest orphanage in Moldova. And at the end of this experience, putting all these windows, the director asked me to come outside and there was a, a, a metal bench and there was 18 young girls sitting on the metal bench all looking at me like puppies in a, puppy, in a, in a pet shop. And he said, they all must leave. I says, where, where are they going? He says, they're finished. I don't know, they're finished. I says, what do you mean they're finished? They were done, 16. They're, they're given a few dollars and sent away. And I, I looked at Chris and my wife and I said, how many can we take in? In the house we just finished had a computer room. And she says, well, if we take the computers out, we can put in three beds. And I says, Chrissy, are you telling me we can only take three of these kids? Her face turned, just drained of blood. She says, oh, that's all we can take. And I looked back, and I chose three girls out of that bench and lost the rest. Toughest thing I've ever done in my life. And Nadia, the girl with the baseball hat, she only has one hand, on her right hand, she only has a thumb, there's no fingers. She's handicapped and she was brutalized all through her years in the orphanage. Had no hope. And today, Nadia is the head girl in Moldova and she's in charge of what we do and she's the one that finds all these miracle makeovers for us. Can you help us? Will you pray about giving a dollar a day to change someone else's life? Mel, we've only got a couple of minutes left. What difference could we make in these lives? If everyone watching were to say we can give a dollar a day. Uh, it's hard to even imagine. I mean, Moldova is, is, a, is a small country. Um, 
with so much need, but if we all come yes. together, um, such a difference could be made um, to these families. And, and the, the incredible thing is, uh, these kids, not, that was 10 years ago yeah. that, we, that Nadia was saved. And, 10 years. Um, it's changing the future, not only of their lives, but also the nation of Moldova. You no longer do you have um, youth that are going off to the four corners of the world to work and um, find a new life for themselves. They're saying, I'm gonna stay here and I'm gonna make a difference where I am. And they're changing other families. So it's not just the kids that we're sa you know, keeping in our homes yeah. and saving. They're going out what they're and doing. their entire country, um, telling them about the love of Jesus Christ. So as, as far as are we're willing to give and as much as we're willing to reach out and um, I, Lord only knows the difference in the change it can make. You can change a life for a dollar a day. And I just urge you, yeah. Father, in Jesus' name, speak yes. to every heart watching that a miracle today could happen that will allow us to be God's hand extended in the world we live in. We love you so much. We appreciate you more than you will ever know. Please watch again for Daily Faith. God bless. For over 25 years, the Cameron family has been changing the lives of orphans in Romania and Moldova from providing running water, flushing toilets, and clean wells to coal for heat, new windows, as well as food and clothing. They champion the physical needs of the orphans in these broken and desolate countries. Many of Moldova's orphans are saved from the horrors of trafficking through homes founded by the Camerons. And in the process, orphans become daughters and sons. They come to know their heavenly father and are forever changed by the love of Jesus. God helped the Camerons lift these amazing young men and women out of darkness. Now, no longer orphans, they want to return and invade that very same darkness with the light of Jesus Christ. The Orphan's Hands equips these daughters and sons to become missionaries. Your monthly gift of $31 will allow us to rescue and take in more girls and boys, saving them from the hell of human trafficking. Your monthly partnership will allow us to care for those in the Orphan's Hands homes in Moldova and the Ukraine. When you partner with us on a monthly basis, giving a dollar a day, you will receive every 30 seconds, a testimonial book of the lives changed by the orphan's hands. If you want to join Philip and Chrissy in taking care of these precious young people, please contact us today by calling 833-DAILY-FAITH. You can also give by going online to philipdcameron.com or by writing to post office box 242246 Montgomery, Alabama 36124 So many lives depend on what we do. Thank you for loving the lost. Philip would love to hear from you. If there is a need for prayer in your life and you want him to pray for your unsaved loved ones, reach out to Philip at 833 Daily Faith. We believe for great things for you. Contact him today. Daily Faith with Philip Cameron, The Orphan's Hands, reserves the right to direct allocated funds to the greatest need.